for me, that's like, one of the reasons I wanted to come on here as well. Not to sit here and say who's got the biggest dick and who's a bit like, I'm this and I'm that, because I'm not. I'm fucking a guest in this fucking culture, man, and I am. I'm a guest. I'm hopefully I'm paying my, adding my part to it and hoping, helping build it. But I'm not here to say that I've done anything fucking superior or I've done anything or I'm any sort of any sort of level. I just thought like once when T's passed, rest in peace to the to him, man. Like, but I thought to myself, if he didn't do this podcast, there's nothing to there's no documentation of that guy's mm. graph career apart from his friends who who can pass the message on, but they're not gonna reach a wider like wider audience. Mm. When his his little boy, Leo, like he's only I've done how old he's maybe two, three or whatever. Mm. When he's fucking 18 years old and people are like, oh, yeah, your dad done this, he's going to be like, all right, it might not be nothing. But then when he goes back to listen to his mm. podcast and they'll be like, fucking mm. hell, like, mm. he was like, do you know what mm. I mean? And, mm. and that was what made me want to come on. I thought, do you know, do you know what's around the corner for myself? Like, mm. and I want to say, doc, I would like to have say documented my story because there's, I've got hundreds of friends and they don't even know who a cross is. Killer, killer, podcast. KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. Live and direct, central London, central as you need to be. Feeling good to be alive right now. Kicking deeper into 2023 with a whole lot of stuff popping. Big shout out to everyone that's got the Kellervision app. Big shout out to everybody that's downloaded it. Free Android, iPhone for your street culture, sports and arts. Come on, son. Where you been? Where you been in this life, huh? You been out there on the road doing it and not having it in your phone? Come on. Big shout out to our sponsors, the mighty Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, inside the house. Now, this is a gentleman that is uh, multi-faceted, shall we say, in the art of street culture. Now, you know when we talk about street culture, we talk about multiple disciplines. Um, very rare you get somebody that is pegging with each other um, in two genres, rap as well as graffiti. Um, some of you may know him as a criminal damage, now newly in PA, and a whole bunch of old school ones from his neck of the woods, uh, Boogie Down Berkshire, hold tight. This is the MC Virtuoso Graffiti Artist across inside the building. How's it going, brother? How, How are, are you? Good, yeah, sweet, mate. Sweet. Up to, uh, well, reasonably versed in terms of microphones, and, and which is something that, to be fair, I knew across before I knew the rap career, and uh, ever since I've, I've been completely enveloped in both, man. No, I appreciate that, man. No, it's... Uh... What it is, mate, it's like the same guy, go hand in hand, growing up, it was before the graph, it was it was, it was into the music heavily before I was into the graph, really. Mm. Um, the whole UK scene, the whole task force, Jest, sort of, Kaiser, ta- um, Terra Firma, mm. all that sort of stuff, I was hooked on that from when I was about 11 years old. So lyrics and stuff has always been, like, on my mind, words has always been a thing for me, you know what I mean? I'm obsessed with words, letters, patterns. Same with everything. It's all. I find it all relates to the same thing with rap and graph. It all sort of. It's all words, all letters, mm. styles. You know what I mean? It's all the same thing. And um, like I say, when I was young, it started off obviously on the twelve ten decks, mixing the garage, drum and bass, around about ninety nine two thousand and one. Because these, what you were talking about just then, were you know. Groundbreaking late '90s UK hip hop acts, which come that heart back from a certain time of of you know UK hip hop full stop. But G- Garage was your entry hole. So yeah, I'd say Garage was probably the entry hole to sort of lyrics and uh, sort of bars and sort of thing. And then um, as I started dabbling in that sort of the vinyl shops and going around places, I met up with people who put me on to sort of the UK hip hop. And at the time, it was very unheard of. So when I started first hearing it, it was like wow, like hearing Chester roll bars and sort of thing like that. It was like, oh, well, and, he, and you felt like he was part of an underground club almost. Cause no oh, I'll have a piece of it. this. Yeah, you know yeah what totally. I mean? That's what it so felt like key. at the time. It felt, yeah. like, felt like, oh, you've been let into some, like this little secret club that no one else knows about. And you'd speak to other people and they'd be like, who's that, who's that? And they wouldn't have a clue sort mm-hmm. of thing, do you know what I mean? So that's how it all started. And like you say, we used to 
like my old man bought me and my brother some 12, 10 decks when we was young and we used to be mixing it down because my family are well musical anyway. My brother plays a guitar, plays a piano, writes and makes music. My dad's the same. He's been in numerous bands, plays a guitar, sings, writes music. I play the drums. What? We're all a musical family from, from an early age anyway. So we've been brought up on like being a, being a obviously mum and my dad from... Um, grew up in um, South Acton, my mum's from Shepherd's Bush, that's where my granddad is, so it's sort of that sort of era, them sort of old school sounds, and they're a bit older than, they're a bit older than my parents to other people's, um, so I've brought up on a lot of different music to other people, so I've been to like, experience a lot of different sounds. Tell, tell me, what kind of, what kind of thing like you brought up? old soul sort of stuff, heavy reggae, heavy reggae, heavy dub. Because um, Shepherd's Bush, West London, for those outside the, the, the Matrix, definitely held court yeah. in that in that in that world of genre. Exactly, it was like um, heavily musical influence from a very young age, mm. you know, my whole family. So we had like a soundproof room in my house um, where I had my drums and that, and we had like numerous instruments. We used to be smashing the place down, do you know what I mean? As well as having the decks in there. So like when it, when we eventually started big school, like secondary school. It was like lunch times as everyone back to my house, mixing it down in the in the soundproof room, and then everyone would be on the mic. Sort of stemmed from there. The whole the whole school the whole school I went to was like into uh, like garage drum and bass, but it was like a big garage scene at the time. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's and, popping back then. Yeah, and you had like the the, the um, Royals in Oxbridge, which was like he used to hold like the under 18s um, Royal um, Garage. Dude, I played at that thing. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah it's the university, right? Like Rhythm Nation. It was yeah, they, I know it. I know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that we had that there. They had as a well. big uni scene there as well. Yeah, that's it? Brunel Uni. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I played there and I played this other spot as well, but it wasn't as popping as the Brunel. Nah, nah. Brun- I think Brunel was got put, got put on by um, I think it was John Blower. I don't know if you know him. Do you know him? Yeah, I, it, the DJ name John spells. Blower, yeah, yeah. He, he was doing a lot of um, a lot of the gigs back then. But I'm talking before, long before. I'm talking like 2001. Oh, wow. Uh, 2002. We used to go up there, and it used to be fucking mayhem up there. Like it would be fully gang, God, gangs of from all over uh, Hayes, like. Yeah. All them sort of boys. We Don't tread on my shoes, kind nah, of. No, it was fucking moody. It was more moody when we was kids than it was when we grew up and actually went to there as like adults. Um, so yeah, that was that was sort of how my introduction into music. Um, and then again, it was just the same thing. It was like kitchen parties, everyone mm. seeing off the nut, fucking just stemming from then. And um, my brother's obviously always been making music, and I've always and he's doing doing gigs. I've been going to him, and I've always felt like that void was missing. You know, with a mm. music thing, um, and it's eating away at me. And I thought, you know what? I need to fucking do something because I don't want to look back when I'm like fifty and think, oh fucking no, I wish I'd done that. So, yeah, that was it. I thought, you know what? I know, I know lyrically. I've, I've I know what it's all about. The patterns, the wordplay, the shit. You know, you can mm. hear it for yourself. I know, there's no like basic rhyming skills sort of thing. I'm doing is I know it's I'm putting a lot of effort into the words, rhyme, the flow try my best I'm not saying I'm the greatest or anything I'm just trying to say like I'm, I studied the fucking art mm. from an early age I'm, I'm not just some like turned up out of the blue so when but that's totally what I hear when I listen to the the, the social commentary and what you do the content the lyrical skills you know these things that are fundamental Um, you can clock a <laughs> you can clock a dud like that's I think moreover that was something that was so surprising to me was the the fact that and respectfully as well because you know you meet people in different moments in their lives yeah, yeah, yeah. but but when you but when you i mean and i've been privy to having you send me stuff and it's like dude like fucking this is bangs it bangs and and should be held to the same esteem as the aforementioned that you 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 talk about yeah no i appreciate that mate i mean i try I, I, for me i'm a perfectionist when it comes to the art you know, like, the, the fucking... If you, anyone who paints me knows when I walk away, I'm never fucking happy, but I think that's come with... True. I think, I think, it's, a, I think it's a good thing, though. I think it's a good thing. I mean, like, shout out to Desire, man. I know he's the yeah, same as me. Desire. Like, we fucking hate our work, like, and it just does nothing but put... I mean, it doesn't sound enjoyable. Like, you think, oh, you're going to paint a four or five-hour piece and you walk away pissed off, but it's one of them ones, if you fucking like your piece, you're never going to get better. Mm-hmm. And it's the same with the music. Like, there's no way I would, would have released sank unless it was fucking perfectly panned, perfectly mm-hmm. word played out. So I know, like, when I'm dropping, but if I'm not, I would only drop sank, I know there's fucking, there's half decent, you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying it's the fucking greatest, but I'm saying it, it has to be half decent. Mm-hmm. You, know what I'm saying? you mentioned the, the the kitchen environment, the the gladiatorial place 
in uh, in the uh, recesses of how you were coming up. I think those environments they do spawn like a level of critique where it's almost like your your peers aren't around you, but when you think back to those kitchen times, your peers are the ones that count, isn't it? Hundred percent. I mean, look, I'm not condoning, but we always dabble in fucking things in it when we were younger. Some of us still do now, mm. but like it was one of them ones. Didn't matter. I had different groups of mates from different areas who don't know each other, and it was the same fucking thing because we was all the same age. It was mm. like. Get back after a night out, back to someone's house before you know it. The fucking instrumentals are rolling. Everyone's off their nut, and everyone's just freestyling off the off the top. And mm. I think that's where a lot of the skill comes from. It's a lot, a lot of the love for it comes from. I mean, with me and my pals, we can still do it. We can still do it now. We don't do it as often because we don't get us out as much. But the best times, mate, is being in. I think being in the kitchen, mm. rolling some heavy mm. instrumentals, back to back of like four or five of your mates, and just creasing up because you're coming mm. out of all sorts of fucked up shit. Mm. And I think that's the that's a big element of uh, of like hip hop. I think that goes that goes a long way for me. Is that that's where it like sort of stemmed from? Do you know what I mean? Like the fun mm. in it off the nut, four o'clock in the morning, and just fucking mm. rolling bars and that. You know mm. what I mean? With your close pals and shit. But you're you're of an age very much like Garage <clears throat> is now. Like the generational demographic of of garage now is is your age and upwards yeah, yeah. to mine. How how accurate do you think the likes of Corrupt FM would people just do nothing nailed it in oh, terms yeah. of what that garage scene was like? Yeah, they were bang on for me. Like basically, <laughs> like when I've come across them, I come across them quite late, and I was like, "Fuck!" You know, my mate kept on saying, "Watch them," and I was just like. Didn't bother because I just, um, I don't know, I just didn't fucking even look. And then once I got into it, I was like, fucking hell, I've missed it. And I felt like I finished the series and they sort of wrapped it up. I was like, what do you mean they're wrapping up? I thought like the buzz just started to get going mm. for Crop Tiff. I, I have spoke to that um, with to that CPO like, on yeah. my Instagram, sent him a few messages over the years, just back and forth, nothing major. But um, oh, he's associated with PA. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. like, and he likes his graph and that. And I think I've done a couple of sketches for for like Crop Tiff and that. Mm. And, and big up Slob as well, of course. Yeah, shout to Slob. He, um, and I just feel feel like they should have... I know they got to a point where they'd done too many series and stuff, but I feel like they I felt like they just got their... The, they yeah. they hit the peak before, and they left. They stopped it. I feel yeah. like they could have rolled it on. Yeah. I feel like it was that good. They could have rolled it as like an EastEnders. Do you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I feel like it, it didn't need to end, but obviously they had bigger things to do and obviously moving on and that, that ship sailed. But yeah, I thought it was brilliant, man. I think they nailed it. Like I feel like when I was watching it, it was almost like sitting around in my mate's house back in 2003. Mm. Exactly the same, the same... Like the way they like structured the people there and stuff, like you had the same like with that Steve. Everyone had a Steve. Like yeah, it was yeah, mad. Yeah. yeah, it was. They nailed it, mate. It was brilliant. I think, and and not only that, that Seepers are actually um in, insane MC as well. Yeah, yeah. Pe people, a lot of people don't realise that he's yeah. actually fucking incredible. And he grew like, up on he grew up on British yeah. British music, like hip hop. Like he's we came on the podcast and we were just talking about British rap and, yeah, and American yeah, yeah. rap. Like I think what um Garage was was a was a uh, in, a door opener. You know what I mean? For yeah, yeah. discovering what MCing is from a more versatile place, wasn't it? Yeah, man. It was uh, definitely the, one of the best genres till to this day. Like, it gets everyone up on the dance floor still. I don't, it's one of the genres that's going to be forever. Yeah. And it's cemented in, I feel like, London as well. Yeah. It's London's, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was, uh, they're up and down the country that Gary's got made, but London, England, it was, that was our, I feel like that was our, my generation, my culture. Mm. And if anyone would have tried to, like, say, look back and think to myself, what was the one, genre that told you spoke about your whole childhood mm. definitely garage was the one wasn't it dude i it speaks to, it speaks to an element of my childhood yeah. uh, and i remember it being ever present while i was into uk hip hop it was all kind of one and the same because there was like girls the girls were more into garage and i remember there being this transition where you know hip hop DJs and drum and bass DJs were moving on to to garage pretty quick yeah. um and yeah there was it was just a time for it wasn't it it was just a it just a whole bustling scene yeah it was a time to be alive mm. i mean like where where i grew up in so i was grew up in sort of hillenden um so what about this hillenden Hayes, Uxbridge, yeah, so Uxbridge Hayes, that sort of way west and, west and they had a big graph massive graph presence around there i mean everyone right but i think listening to your podcast it sounds like every fucking area was exactly the same as ours it's weird like i listen to slob's podcast it's like more or less describe my whole fucking child and mm -hmm. i've never even went over them ways and i don't even didn't even know him like yeah. it's weird but so we must have all been doing the same sort of shit but mm. like for me it was like there was we was the young in in our sort of school like growing up we was like when it all kicked off we was the youngest we was like the youngest of the year and we was in like year seven 
all the Euro bars were the way all the MCs, the DJ was, mm. as you know, like mm. everyone knows it's the same. And we used to be like, we had a park outside our school called Coney Green and it was quite notorious at the time. I mean, if people, some people won't know what it is, but the people that did, it was fucking popping. Like really? Friday night, you're talking like two, 300 people over there. Like it'd be carnage, people from different schools. It'd just be fucking crazy. Oh, They'd be smashing God, the fucking place up, fires, people just getting... Sp- Fights happening left, right, centre. Really? Police riot vans driving around, people jumping on the back, riding round on them, blowing up stolen motors. It was Scratch fucking Scratch that, carnage. that sounds horrendous, bro. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> hey, it was carnage, but if you was if you was down with everyone, it was fucking fun. Do you know what I mean? You're 12, 13, 14 years old running riot around the area. But that's where you come across the different schools that sort of come down to this park and it'd be everyone be emceeing in the graveyard. Mm. And, and these guys, some of these guys moved on and started emceeing and like... Um, and all the radio stations that are around West at the time as mm. well. And um, obviously being too young, I just missed that boat. I was mm. like, there's no radio that's going to let some fucking 12-year-old geezer come on the, on the radio. So I, like, I sort of missed that boat then as well. So that was another thing, like, I wish I was, a, at the time, I wish I was a little bit older because a few fr- older brother friends and that, they was all in the uh, Under 18s Royals MC in there. And... Oh, man, yeah, I can imagine that, actually. It's funny just going back to maybe the COVID period here, you know, where young people have missed... You know, the ones that were just about to go into, you know, higher education, mm. they got locked off because of COVID and then come back. I'm talking like past tense now, Jimmy. You know I mean? I'm sure they're over it. But, you know, at the time, it was like they lost a whole three years, four years almost of club land. Yeah. You know what I mean? The and, best and, years of their life they missed. Yeah. yeah. Especially if they were like 17, going into 18, 19. You know, you can't get get them years back, 18, 17, no. 18, 19, sort of. It's fucked up. Yeah, it's not good. And they wonder why the clubs ain't. Popping. But I just feel like it's still the whole the whole landscape's changed anyway. Like the kids these days, there's no one over the fucking parks. They're, like my daughter's fifteen, she's she's in a fucking room every day. Hold on, it's fifteen. Look, the pixelation don't do him justice. You got a, you yeah, got no, a it's my missus. My missus daughter, but I brought her up from early as well. I've got Big my own daughter that. as well, who's one. Big up all but, the mums um, and dads. Yeah, Come but on. like she's, I call her my daughter, of course, because she's yeah. for yeah. years, and she's my. But their generation, I mean, you don't see it anymore. We used to, like I said back then, you used to drive down down the street like walk through the street and there'd just be kids everywhere. Like you say, people be scratching yeah. the buses up, graphing the place, smashing yeah. the place up. You drive down there now, there's no one about. Everyone's sitting in their rooms. I, I don't know what's... I, it's yeah. definitely changed. And I think it was already going down that path, but then the COVID just fucked it even more. I feel like... I feel like I don't know... I, I, mate, I don't even... last six weeks holidays, I like driving around. I, I thought I've just moved to another area and there's parks, everyone. It's just empty. The place like a fucking... Do you, do you think... Uh, just Sorry to interject. You, you just caught my attention there when you said... You, you know, just me summing up in my mind where you were coming from. Do you think like Graf has lost its youth culture appeal and more is for a bespoke, um, uh, what's the best word to describe it? Just a minority. Do you think it's more for a minority of people that just want to kind of do Graf and that's their vocation as opposed to a youth culture that, uh, that, that, that casts trends? I feel like at the moment, and the scene's very healthy and uh, and it's smashing it more. But if you uh, like, you see these tags going up, and you eventually meet these writers, and they're all fucking old, like same age. They're all thirty five plus. Some of them, I mean, you meet the odd twenty five year old who's doing it. But it's sort. I feel like it's uh, it's sad to say, but I feel like it's definitely going to be like a dying, a dying trend. I think there always will be graph, but I don't think you're ever going to have a wave of graphers like it did. in like, mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's been waves and waves, so they probably there might be another wave. But I just feel like. The way that the kids and everyone are moving now, with they're in, sitting in their rooms, computers, online presence sort of thing, who's actually going out there? There's, it's very rare you see a young a young graffer coming up. And back in the day when we was kids and we was coming up as young writers, we used to, the older guys would hate the fact that we these young what we were writing that we was down their walls painting mm. on their mm. walls. Be, I mean, there's numerous stories we've been get, getting chased out of fucking all the fames and stuff from older writers. But now I feel like. Whenever I come across a young writer, I want you. I feel like we need to bring him in, mm. put an arm around him, and yeah. keep the culture going. Because you, know <laughs> you put a towel around him and say, "Dude, come come sit with us. We'll teach you everything." Yeah, ben well, Kenobi style. True. Like there's a few. <laughs> where I've moved to now. There's a few young, young, younger guys coming through. Yeah. I mean, they're only like really young, and I will catch them at the wall. Some I met some guy painting with his mum and that, and I was just like, "Fair play." Like at least there's someone in a school fucking still tagging and that because yeah. you don't really. I don't think it's still going. I mean, maybe central London, you still got that shit going on, but I don't know. 
it doesn't seem the way. It's like you don't yeah. see you don't see anyone at walls anymore, really, youngsters, do you? No. All, they're all men. They're, they're all old men. Guys, still yeah. can't let go of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Still can't get let go. No. Uh, but but that, that and that's cool as well. I guess it I guess yeah, it has lost its youth movement. Yeah. I'll say it has. I'll say it has. But then again, you, you used to say ten years time and a big wave comes through again, mm. you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's more popular than ever. I think people looking at it, taking pictures of it and allowing it to be on the streets is a lot more acceptable but i don't mm. see this i don't see a lot of kids these days uh, they don't get it i don't feel they even get it dude how does that work right so okay so let's just deep into this right it's not coming from a youth source so much but it's being allowed to stay up longer reasonably tolerated i mean you've got to be doing some pretty heavy damage for you know what i mean for you to be kind of getting gripped in 2023 at the moment yeah, as it so. stands so where how does that juxtaposition work how is it like it's more tolerated yet it's not got the same pickup through generations on well just like touching on that like for instance right we when i was at school when i first started writing i started writing when i was before i was even in second school like fascinated with tags from early on but like just to give you an like an understanding of the sort of fucking hell how it was so frowned upon is we had um we had a little crew in our school anyway that we used to all put up um i ain't gonna go into it but like because we all got nicked for it but we had uh we didn't know we we're so fucking naive so stoned at our heads all the time in school we didn't even realize that there was a police officer in our school and he was there for a year and we was told he was there to fucking do you know like breakout sessions with kids and all that sort of thing no, I never fucking realised he didn't do anything there. So this whole time this police officer was on, in our school, he was undercover trying to catch all of us graffiti writers and we were so fucking thick we didn't even realise. So what happened? We was in Uxbridge and we'd gone down this side uh, um, road next to the old Argos and people that know Uxbridge and know that alley where it goes through the station into the high street. There was a drug squad camera put up down that alley because there's a lot of drug dealing going on down there apparently. And they had like a face recognition camera. And back in like 2002, like they were like the new fucking things, face mm. recognition mm. camera. No one knew. So this thing was plotted in a window. You couldn't even see it. So we've all gone up Uxbridge on a fucking Saturday daytime. We used to go up there, same as everyone else, robbed fucking Halfords, mm. robbed the blind man store in the fucking pavilions. It was a fucking you know, stand, same old stand, stand, stand old stuff. Shit, yeah, I mean. yeah. <laughs> but um, so we all, we've all hit this wall down this alley. And then we've, so like, We've come down this road, three of us, and we've seen like five of my other mates who've got to us before us, and they've all tagged this wall. So we're like, fucking hell, we better get a reach up on there as well. So we've hit this tag as well up on this wall. And now, say no more, it's just another fucking tag on another yeah. wall. And then, um, what, six to eight months later, just before Christmas, half the crew's being bagged off, like all of us are being fucking what? nicked, apart from me. I'm the only one who didn't get nicked. So they've all been taken in, they've all been caught on this camera, face recognition for these tags. But this police officer has been undercover for the whole time in there and these teachers have been pulling our sketches out of the fucking bins and that. So they've got like folders of like, say for instance, we, we were a really naughty class. So we, when everyone was doing their GCSEs and shit like that, yeah. we were so fucking naughty. They would just be like, right, there'd be a ped, pad of paper on the fucking table, box of pens. That's the only way they fucking shut us up. It's the only way they could get us to not smash fucking place up. You know what I mean? But that's, that's how bad we were. Like So... After we finished tagging these fucking things up, but we, we didn't give a fuck. Like we like you say, we're all stone out of reds all the time. So yeah. We didn't really care at the time. Was, yeah. And then we'd screw our bits of paper up, probably chuck them on the floor in the bin. And the teachers were coming out, pulling them out of the bin, building this case. Anyway, we all got we all got nicked. Uh, apparently, they come around my house on, um, before, uh, before Christmas, same as everyone else, but no one answered the door. So all my mates at the time was only, what, 14... They all got nicked before Christmas, didn't get fuck all for Christmas. Like, oh, they, ruined, like, they all went to court, they all got fined thousands, a lot of them <laughs> bus cases as well, because some of them just fucking didn't get them, didn't catch them, their face right. Um, so then, yeah, I was the last person, so I thought, sweet, I've got away with it. And yeah. then after Christmas, boss, PC, his name was, comes turn up at my door, fucking comes in my house, tell, says to my old man, like, oh, We've got him um, down for like, we've got a folder on him with our blah, 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 rooftops, loads of shit. Not so much track size and trains, but it's just pure street. This was bombing. fact. This was, this was, this was you that, this that, that was, yeah, this is me. And then I was like, I remember saying, I so saw again, thick as fuck, stoned at me, and probably again, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, that ain't my tag. I write this tag. And he was like, you write that tag? Yeah. Fucking hell, that's everywhere as well. And I thought, oh, mate, it's got worse and worse. Anyway, they pulled me in. Mm -hmm. I had to, uh, 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 and they wanted me to come in and, uh, and uh, 
arranged for me to come and they didn't nick me. So I was young. They said, look, come down, mm. set up a fucking, like, what's it, like an interview for me to come down. So I had to go come down there. It was mm. like, they have a nick me. I had to come down there. So the couple of days later, I come down there, Bosch, nicked, fucking magistrate's call, met stand up in Uxbridge magistrate's call, thousands of thousands of pounds worth of fines. And they, he wanted, they had to pay it off in one go as well. There was no payment plan, no oh, nothing. Man. And at the time, I'm not being funny, like they weren't that sort of money sitting around no. for them to be paying out fat couple of, well, I can't remember what it was, but it was in like, at the time, I think it was about five grand or something. But at the time, it's fucking a lot of That's money. a lot of money, yeah, I mean? of course. And, um, it's a lot, that, a lot of money now, bro. But just like, going back to like the kids going up, I mean, like, would you ever get that now? Would you ever get a fucking police officer being assigned to a fucking school for the whole year just to track down, I don't know, what, seven or eight kids in a school for graffiti, you know? It's, it's, it, it, no. I, I mean, th <laughs> there's an argument that there probably should be more police in presence more than ever. Yeah, that's what I mean. But to, for Graf alone? Have you ever even heard insane. of that? I've never even... No. I listen to a podcast. I've never heard that. I've never heard anyone no. with a similar story like that. It was ever. fucking mad. But like you say, we weren't... I've never come on here to claim I've fucking done anything massively in the scene anyway. I wanted to come to document what I've said about the music and everything. But like I said, that was that for me was like, yeah, we peppered fucking... Hillenden, Hayes, Uxbridge, mm. fucking Rice, just that sort of an era. But we fucking yeah. hit it hard, like just stupid shit, like the scratching of buses. Like we used to have a nice little plot on the Uxbridge Road, um, opposite that currently green I was talking mm -hmm. about. And we used to fucking, it used to be the big hill, and we used to sit there about 10 strong, just pull up the backs of the 207 at the time, um, cut them off, and then fucking bash, batter the whole fucking. These are the things we got nicked for, yeah, like yeah. the rooftops down the Uxbridge Road. Um, the scratches on the fucking buses. We were just like, just vandals at the time, you know. We weren't really, we didn't even take it too serious. We was just fucking out there. Just It was just an everyday thing. It was like, well, we're going to roll a joint over here. And then on the way, we just tag everything was on the way. Yeah, yeah, and on yeah. the way back, we fucking tag it again. So it was just like overlapping of the same shit, not constantly, we're on our whole fucking pathways, you know. So how, okay, so on that similar subject, how did you get into criminal damage? How did that come oh, about? Oh, criminal damage is, well, so like I said, how what got me into graph at the time? was going back, say, back to about 99. Um, I used to have, well, going even further, to be fair, going back to probably about 95, 96, I used to go over Fastings Park and my mum used to take me over there on my skateboard and aggressive inline skating. I used to do all that as well. Really? Yeah, yeah. I actually, um, I was pretty good on the skateboard. I got sponsored, well, I got sponsored by a reaction uh, uh, um, at the time. Wow. Clobbered out from loads of stuff. So... It started off through through skateboarding. That's how it started off. I used to go down Fastings Park and I used to see L, all the LB boys smashing it all there. And at the time, I didn't know who LB was. Didn't even mm -hmm. see the LB part. Mm -hmm. I just see all the tags, and I was just like fascinated because mm -hmm. it was like an old wooden, an old wooden half pipe with a fucking tombstone they used to call it at the top. And they'd be there doing all this stuff, and there'd be dubs everywhere. And I'd be there with my mum. Mm -hmm. I was only fucking six, seven. And a lot of them, like, they probably don't even know that because I never really even told any of them, but there was a few there. I can't even remember which ones of it. I know there was a couple there. I think yeah. it was like Alco and a couple of other boys. I can't remember which ones. But I mean, if they watch this, they might know it was them. But Comment below if you're watching whoever you are watching and you're in the area, you remember the back in the day. Well, if they do, they, will, they do. But they, like you say, they used to, like, be obviously being well, really young and be dropping in the ramp and stuff at that age. I mean, they used to be trying, trying to teach me things and stuff. I've, um, that was the first introduction. And then from that, it was obviously like I always loved tags. But then my dad used to do like a, um, he used to be like a delivery driver, his own business delivery driver. And he used to be out like four o'clock in the morning and he used to go travel the whole of West London. So like we'd go up as far as where we are now, um, Harrow on the Hill, Rainers Lane, fucking Ickenham, all oh, right. And I used to drive around at like four o'clock in the morning when all the shutters were down. So I'd be driving and it'd be, my dad wouldn't be, we wouldn't be talking. And I'd be looking out the window and just seeing like the same tags. And there was this one fucking tag that always stood out. And I didn't even know what it said, but I first learned to realise that after a few years it was owed, but he used to put an ER on it, so it was owed R. Nice. And it was everywhere. And I, I always used to look at that, and that was one of the first tags I thought, mm. fucking hell. And there was another tag I used to see called Ace. But I, I don't know what happened to him. I've asked a mm -hmm. few people, and they're, they're like, I don't know, but it was just an Ace, like, pretty shit. ACE. But it, ACE, but it had like a little uh, two eyes in the E. But I used to see that everywhere as well at the time. It's going back fucking years, though. Yeah, I'll comment below if you know, you know. Come on. And that's and that's that's how I, that was the first sort of intro. That was when in primary school. That's when I've like everything started coming together with the with the skateboarding thing with that. And I started piecing them together. Like, oh, I've seen that down there, and then uh, so on and so forth. And then we used to go up to Denham Weir in the summer hot in the summer holidays. We go Denham Weir, and it used to be like a big fucking moody weir that apparently people used to die jumping in and all that. Oh, but on the way to Denham Weir, you had to pass. 
Denham um, Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. So it was like these older boys we used with at the time from um, from Romley. There's another estate that we used to live um, near where I was from, and they used to have some horrible boys around that way. But where we was the youngers, they used to let us roll with them sometimes, really young. Like anyone else would probably sort of get bashed up. Mm. They used to, we went, I mean, never forget, like we when they took us down that pathway and we see... Denham Hall of Fame for the first time and it was about 98 and I remember seeing yeah it blew my mind I was like fuck and I remember seeing like this this soz dub like in orange and grey and I was like fucking hell and prize it was just it was was LB's spot man there's no denying it like they got there first they done all the fucking I don't know if they got there first but from what I see it looked like they got there first but their level of their graph was miles beyond anyone else's like Mm. they were all talented got massively talented and that was like that was it as soon as I see them boys, like all them LB walls, that was it. I was like, fuck, Game wow, that is me. I'm mm. all on a piece of this. Mm. So, but then we go down there and fucking toys, fuck, ta- finding cans in the bushes and, and fucking painting over whatever. I'm just ups- probably upsetting a lot of people as well. But like you said, mm. we was 11 years old. Yeah. Like, obviously, looking back now, like, do you know what I mean? I don't re- I'll regret doing it now, but like some decent yeah. burners, a lot of the boys we just didn't give a fuck either. Like, not so much myself. I never really took the piss, but like some people didn't give a fuck and just. Yeah. Right and over did they pay shit. the consequences? Some, some of yeah. them did. Yeah, some of them got chased and got a, got a clump and that. Like you know, what I mean, mm. a few people did get an eye didn't. Um, but like you say, that was a uh, that was the intro. So like from like ninety nine to about two thousand and four, it was like full on everyday life. Like like you say, tagging. I weren't writing across at the time, so mm. that's the thing. You wouldn't have seen that anywhere. It was another tag, um, another crew, another tag. If like you don't say. talk about this podcast, because you know. Pairs, be the pairs, There's no point linking there. I don't want to link the two yeah. anyway. Like people know know me anyway. So how did you meet? How did you? How did you? So this I'm coming with, on yeah. to. So you had. Because I want to know about across as well. Where yeah, that name yeah. come so from? So like, so then obviously you had LB that was smashing the, the Hall of Fame, and there was to a certain level. But then you'd have, then you'd see a couple of CD boys down there. Like you had Baps and Desire. Oh, tight just, Baps and just like setting levels yeah. like like they were shit was like unbelievable. Like yeah. I look at this, I'd be like like fucking hell, and it's incredible. Like they were like some New York fucking crazy wild style madness. Like, and that was like, and the thing is where we was, I was so young again, they were so much, so much older than me when I bumped into the likes of them. So Baps and Desire, they were like arm around your shoulder. Mm. Well, nice. Embrace sound. If, and like, yeah. you'd hear rumors about them boys being fucking horrible to everyone yeah. else. But where we was kids, yeah. they was sound. So yeah, there was like, what, like bumping into like Desire, Baps, there was love there from day mm. one. And that, even though was, I was really young and he was a grown man, I was probably about 12. <laughs> it was, that's how it stemmed from. So that's how I branched into knowing them boys. Mm. And then... Um, that's really close. That's almost family level of yeah, like, integrating. So that's how, I mean, I don't even know if they even would even remember this. So I know they probably will do, but that's how young it was. And then obviously 2004 hit, 2005. I got nicked in 2003, I think it was 2004. So it slowed me down. Yeah, for graph rate, that was when I got nicked in school. So it slowed me down a bit. And I was like, then it started turning into like fucking going out, drinking, drugs, pubs, clubs, birds. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And mm. it, it was just a long stretch. But even, even in amongst that long stretch, there was still like, if there was a pen handy, it was getting, the toilet was getting tagged. If there was a can handy, the sink was getting tagged. If it was back at someone's house, shit was getting tagged. So it was never, never, never stopped. Mm. Never stopped. So the piece, was, when I first started piece, it was terrible. Like, and then 2000, I think 11, I was with some bird at the time and, and I was like, I don't know what happened. Do you know what it was actually? I'll tell you what it was. I think I signed up onto an Instagram account and I went on there. I think it might've been around that time. I could be wrong. It might, it's definitely an online thing, but I can't back onto an on, on maybe Instagram years ago, about 2011, I think. Mm. And then I started seeing all the old faces like your DDS boys and people still doing it. I was like, fuck, these boys are still doing it. Mm. Like, so maybe I, maybe I ain't too bad if I crack on back on it. Yeah. I'm not, now I'm a man, like in my 20s. Like, yeah, you ain't too far away from the, the 2004, 2005 you. Nah, it's generally nah. like what, four years after. Nah, like four, so like, I think it was 2012. I, I went up to like up to Feltham, um, the old paint shop in Feltham and that with the... Um, like a lot of memories there. Like everyone, everyone's been there. Do you know mm-hmm, what I mean? It's mm-hmm. a, like the woman, little old lady behind there was like a fucking diamond. Do you know what I mean? Like it, all of them were there. They knew exactly what we was doing. We was loading up fucking chrome burners, and they knew exactly <laughs> what was going on. Um, I remember getting a few cans of a few powers and that, and we were like we went down to Denham, and I we I put up a, an across piece because I started dabbling with a cross before I forgot before I left the, the stop stop writing for a bit and then um, I come back done this across bit and I was like fucking hell that's like mm. 10 times better than any it was shocking mate because I look back and it's terrible like really bad but I thought fucking hell it's like 10 times better than anything I ever done mm. four years ago and I haven't even been practicing so that was it I was hooked in and it was like right I'm 
cracking on now. And I was, that, from there, that, mm. that one forward, it was like, right, I need to, I was addicted to letter style. Mm. Like, I, all I wanted to do is have the fucking, all my goals, I just wanted to have sick letters. I don't give a fuck about anything else. All the feel shit, that's bollocks to me. Like, even letters, now, even, even now, I'm not interested. Uh, for now, like most of my stuff is just plain. It's quite plain. I'm not. It's I don't really go in. Love, I, yeah. I like the clean. I, I don't. When you when you got the letters, Gan, you don't need to do do all the fancy stuff inside. Mm. Fancy stuff takes. I feel like it takes it away from the letters. Yeah. People can do like the madness feel, and then you look at the letters and it's like, well, it's a nice piece because you've got crazy feels and all that. But I feel like. Work on them letters, strip it back, mm. and then let your letters do the fucking talking. And I feel like my that's been my mission for the last since 2012 is to get my letters to that fucking standard sort of fucking level. But where do you, you know? know I mean? And I think for the layman's, aka me, it'd be really nice to know where this. Where do you define the standard as big? Like how? How do you gauge that standard? How how do you I, mate, as a like progressive? I, said, I don't. I don't like I said. I like I told you before. I, I fucking walk away from every wall unhappy. All the time, but like like you said, I, I don't sketch a lot. Um, I had a good few years. Like I had a really cushy job going back about three four years ago, which I was at for five years, and they didn't have a clue where I was or what I was doing. And I just had three four. I was painting what 120 pieces a year at the time for like a good three or four years, sure. solid. Wow. Like putting in like all le- lot, all of them illegal pieces. Like mm. spending fucking hours at these walls, just mm. fucking about doing my sketching on the walls and and a sort of progressing and look coming back with a piece and thinking. That ain't too bad. I like that. See, I like that. I'll, let me let me start mm. mixing it about, and then yeah. slowly just juggling my letters around until I started finding some nice styles, and then mm. from then just working on the cleanness and then elevating my fucking style. So, I, like, don't get me wrong. Like, there's so many good writers out there. I like I look up to, and I, I take things from. Not take things, but like get inspiration from. Give me uh, some names. What of just some like UK Inspired, UK yeah. writers for me? All, like, your, all worldwide. Like for yeah. me, the UK writers. Like I said, LB is a massive influence on me. CD massive influence on me. I think RT mm. are one of the best for me. Like just, one oh, of the yeah. be, like, production wise, star wise. Them boys are, like like vibes and towns mm. and, yeah. and all them boys. They yeah. they were fucking heavy. Do you know what I mean? And and not often talked on a podcast. You know? No, I don't. That's what I mean. I, I have some similar conversations with people, and and, and it's like I turn yeah. around saying pound for pound. Like they are. They were. For me, for me, I'm not saying it's up. For me personally, for pound for pound, they were one of the strongest crews. Like yeah. all round of it, all of them were heavy. Yeah. I'm not saying like they were the best, like of, of what they done. But I mean, like pound for pound, they, yeah. I felt like they were a solid crew. Do you know what I mean? Hundred percent. And they, in my later years, I've definitely got some inspiration from them guys, man. Um, but again, like I said, I like to think like my style. I like to think it's a, it's definitely a London style to it. Mm. Definitely a London style to mm. it because that's where it's, where it's spawned from. I don't know. I just I don't I don't know. I wouldn't like to say what I think my style. What else? All I know is it's a London. It's born from London and it's born from them crews I've just mentioned. Mm. And, and respect to all of them crews I've mm. mentioned because they they played a massive part in, yeah. in, in everything I've done. And don't get me wrong. It's on um, I think Instagram as much as everyone fucking hates it and stuff. It plays a massive part on. It makes a massive part of my, for me because it makes me when I when I go on there on a fucking Monday or a Sunday night and everyone's uploading their pieces, I'm like, oh shit, he's mm. killed that. Mm. I need to get out and fucking level my shit up now. You know what really? I mean? So, Do you get that? Yeah, all the time. And, 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 and there's some some people at the moment are doing them, especially them PA boys. Big up to the PA mm. boys. They're fucking putting. I mean, I've been uh, put down in the crew like a couple of weeks back off the back of the tease thing, and I've known some for a while. Mm. But I'm in their group chat now on WhatsApp. And they're fucking, mate, put me to shame. Like, their work rate is unbelievable. They're really? out every fucking night smashing it. And I'm like, and I'm sitting home, I've got to sell a new baby and stuff. And I'm like, gone from 120 pieces a fucking year to like, I'm barely getting out <laughs> once a month. But at the end of the day, like, when I can get out, I will get out and I want to drop something heavy. Like, I'm not going to waste my time on something shit. Do you know what I mean? I fucking love that they're, the work rate in PA. And... Yeah, they are. They're putting work rate. I mean, I don't know if people are seeing it, but they, they yeah, are. I'm, like, seeing, I'm it. seeing it. So. Mm. And like I said, I'm down with them boys now as well, which is a fucking fair play yeah. to them. Like, I'm happy to be down with them. Yeah, man. Big up, Slob. Big up, Moan. Uh, big up, uh, big up. rest in peace, of course, to, to Tease. Yeah, um, and that's one of the... Touching on Tease, that's... For me, like, that's one of the reasons I wanted to come on here as well. Not to sit here and say who's got the biggest dick and who's a bit like, I'm this and I'm that, because I'm not. I'm fucking a guest in this fucking culture, man, and I am. I'm a guest. I'm hopefully I'm paying my... Adding my part to it and hoping... Helping build it. But I'm not here to say that I've done anything fucking superior or I've done anything or I'm any sort of any sort of level. I just thought like once when T's passed, rest in peace to the to him, man. Like, but I thought to myself, if he didn't do this podcast, 
there's nothing to, there's no documentation of that guy's mm. graph career apart from his friends who who can pass a message on, but they're not going to reach a wider wider audience. Mm. When his his little boy Leo, like he's only I don't know how old he's maybe two three or whatever. Mm. When he's fucking eighteen years old, and people are like, oh yeah your dad done this, he's gonna be like all right, it might not be nothing. But then when he goes back to listen to his mm. podcast, and he'd be like fucking mm. hell, like mm. he was like, do you mm. know what I mean? And mm. and that was what made me want to come on. I thought, do you know, do you know what's around the corner for myself, like. Mm. And I want to say, doc, I would like to say, document my story because there's I've got hundreds of friends and they don't even know who across is. Mm. Dude, I, even what you were talking there about skating, yeah, about yeah. you know your early doors, and you know I, I always see you in the kind of box you're reading. You know, I've only been she, there a year. Yeah, yeah. Here, so man, I, like. I just automatically because you travel in, but yeah, I didn't yeah. know you. Were, you know, there's loads of the good things, and this is the beauty of podcasts, right? And I think I, I mean I certainly didn't come come in with any intention of. People that were well, my friends passing away, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the, the 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 fallout of doing podcasts uh, is of that, and at least there's a conversation to be had where you know we find out more about people. Certainly, man, it's it's definitely like I say. It's, I thought I weren't really too keen about coming on here, not because of the platform or anything, but the fact that I didn't feel like I'd done enough to 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 talk about. But one of the main reasons I wanted to come in here was to promote the music as well. Like mm. I said, I wanted to put. I want to be pushing out this year. I've got some new tracks coming out and stuff. And I well, on that note, because uh, I was coming to this, because obviously, across is your your music name. The correlation between the the genres that you specify in within street culture is evident. What I love about what you do, and this is why we keep your anonymity very much in line with the music as well as the graph, is because you you associate. I remember what was the name of that graph tune that you put out. Fucking so track sides was yeah, the track sides. Yeah, um, and then there was the other one. Um, uh, uh, the scene, maybe the scene and lifestyle. I've got three. Is track sides the first? Then it was the scene. Yeah, this track side was the one because I tell you why because it's on my playlist. On yeah, yeah. whenever we're painting, it's on yeah, there, yeah. right? And it's just the way in which you depict the the imagery. You know, it's very. It's, it's very expressive, so you quite can really vivid. get... An, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can get a real snapshot of what it's about. And that's quite rare. For, yeah, everyone has heard graffiti, basically. And sometimes they can be a bit corny. At, yeah, yeah. At, but you it's don't true. go that road. It feels very I, I feel like reflective. Like, there's only a couple of artists in the UK that have dropped graph tracks. I mean, obviously, you've got, you've got graph for bus up by Chester and Fair Play. Like, them boys... Are, are, they're heavy in the scene and that, but they're not. I don't think they're. I think um, Farmer used to do a bit of writing, but I don't think mm. he was. Uh, they weren't graph graffiti writers, you know. No. Yeah. So when they touched on that song, I thought, yeah, it was a banger. But I felt like no one. I mean, there could be. There could be. There could be um, graffiti artists out there. I don't know about, but I thought. I feel like if they was, I would have heard about it. But I feel like there hasn't been a proper graph track. Mm. There's, there's talks. I mean, I feel like they 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 talk about things in these other tracks, but there's not actually a real. So with gra with that track size. Um, again, my brother produced all my, my brother produces all my tunes. Stuff it. Yeah, my brother produced all my tunes. So he so he, ain't, he, ain't family, even, he ain't even a producer. Like yeah. he got the equipment, and then I mean, I told him what sort of vibe I'm on, and then he come back, and because he's just fucking a musical genius. Yeah, yeah. A, honestly, he's a musical genius. He just flip it in a couple. He pick hours. up any instrument. He play your fucking song. He's a singer, songwriter, anything. He, I told him what I want. He come back. He sent me track, track sides, first ever beat he ever what? made. And a lot. And listen, I'm not. I'm not saying it's, it's a fucking. Le it's up there level, level yeah, wise. And yeah. if you think about it, it's his first ever proper beat. I can't he believe made. you said that. That's I, I couldn't believe it. So I thought, fucking, we're onto a bit of magic here. So I thought, right. As soon as I heard the tune, I thought, right, this is a graphing. So I weren't plan. I weren't plan on doing a graphing. I thought this is a graphing. And then, then the I used to, I write all my stuff. So I'm driving. So I'm, I'm out on my day job, and I and I'll be listening to music instrumentals and little things are come to me and I'm like in my notes and the mm. next one I've got a fucking I've got a 16 I'm like fuck and then the hooks comes to me and I'm quite I'm quite good at writing music as well I don't just I've, I've wrote a few other songs as well not mm. for like a sent, bit of a mm. ghost writing for, some, for my brother and a few other people so I'm quite good at write, songwriting anyway. I'm not, I'm not saying my fucking tracks are great but I'm just saying I'm quite good at songwriting other genres as well fantastic and um so that was it. We we sort of I wrote this track down. The hook was fucking so catchy, and my brother was like, "That hook's heavy." I was like, "Sweet." And then that was it. We went into the um, Pirate Studios, round and round. We recorded this track, and I was like, "We so got I'd, Pirate Studios." You got to remember, we're on. well amateurs in this as well. So we sort of put all this stuff together, and we added the little fucking all the little effects and everything. And we come. We was on the way home in the car, and I was like, "All right, fucking stick it on in the car." Mm. It was maybe mixed down, mastered or nothing. 
And then, um, yeah, they started playing the track and uh, and we was like, fucking hell, this is all right. Like, and it was like, I know the lyric patterns were fucking on point. There's no, you can dissect the whole fucking every bar. There's no, the patterns are like solid, like the wordplay mm. solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's no little extra bits where I've tried to like, where I've fucked the pattern up. I mean, it's all there. Yeah, where you're yeah. skipping a little too yeah, fast. Yeah, there's no skip. Like it. It's like pro const the whole thing yeah. with pattern. So like anyone who knows lyrics and or MCs, they can listen to it and, they, and you can see it. Like, it might not be the greatest fucking... Um, sort of punchy lines and stuff in it, but like the wordplay itself, the rhyming patterns, the multiple syllable mm. rhyming shits that was on lock. So I knew I can release it because I knew like, if this does go into the ears of anyone half decent, yeah. it will be fucking, it, people might be like, well, it might not be my thing, but you've got to respect the fucking wordplay. Yeah. Um, catch uh, managed to get hold of it over the time. Oh, big up Catch. And uh, he, Catch gave it to DJ MK. MK, so you got to remember, it's my first ever track. Never released any music. Fucking casual. D DJ MK's <laughs> now got it. He's messaging me saying, he's messaging me saying, right, I'm playing it tonight on Kiss FM on D uh, DJ Shorty Blitz things. Yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah. nah. Yeah. Like people, I'm not. It's a lot. It's yeah. a big thing for me. Like, I've yeah. dropped one oh, fucking track. Now DJ MK's playing yeah. on Kiss FM about three weeks later. And I'm like, fucking fair. I couldn't believe it. So Your I'm, brother's, meanwhile, in the studio knocking off about like, 20 my brother's other beat, bang, My brother's banged out <laughs> fucking albums and he's never managed to get a fucking radio play, let alone from Kiss and DJ MK. But I know DJ MK supports the fucking scene and I know he loves his graph. Mm -hmm. So I've sent it and then I was. I remember I was down at my mum's. My mum and I have moved down to Devon. So I've got connections down in Devon now. I've made some good tight connections down there for graph as well. And I've nice. been painted with them boys. So big up all the Southwest boys as well. Down in Devon, Come they're on. fucking all sound as well, and um, so, so yeah, I remember being down there, and I was um, I was out for a meal at the time, and I thought I can't miss this, so I yeah. remember sitting there with the fucking friends and family, and, and I got my earphone in a Saturday night, and I'm eating a fuck, I can't remember where I was, but I was eating some grub, and. It's come on, and I listened to it live, and I was just gassed. And at the time, and I remember coming home, and my dad's obviously massive musical, and he was like, found it next day, and we listened to it. I mean, it ain't massive to like the likes of like big these big rappers and stuff, but like for me, for myself, I, it was big for me, you know. It's important, and and also it always, no matter how old you get, no matter how many songs you've had, it it still. I think it's the compression that is on the radio. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's that you're hearing it in a different context. Yeah, it's definitely, man. And he didn't, not only that, big up MK, because he was scratching that, he was scratching it up as well Stop over my it. track as well. Like, and he weren't scratching up for nothing else. And then he sort of mixed it in with a different sort of genre. And then it come in and then he was scratching it up as well. So I was like, just oh, to like add God. that bit of extra, like, he must, like, yeah. do you know what I mean? He I must thought, have really, he knew this was a solid. Yeah, this well, was... I, well, I hope to think, I, 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 either way, man, I appreciate it. Do you know it's what I mean? Massive. For him, it might not have been a big thing, but for me, it was massive. Do you know what I mean? It was one yeah. of the highlights of that year. Do you know what I mean? And after that, it was like, I need to make a couple more. My brother sent me a couple and more beats. And like, over the space of like a year and a half, I just started slowly making these songs. So again, the scene done really well as well. Um, that was probably the most played on, on my thing. Um, lifestyle as well done quite mm. well I mean like, when I say quite well I'm not saying they've done thousands but I mean like they I've got really good feedback off them you know especially from the graph community man mm. like a lot of people love them I get messages still to this day on my Instagram just saying like they love the tracks on their playlist and look I'd, I'd love to be able to reach tens of thousands of people like but at the end of the day if I even if I can reach fucking 20 30 people and they're playing on their playlist man knowing that mm. someone's driving around listening to my music if fucking this, it's all oh, I need. It makes me buzz, right? makes me want to go out and do it again. I, I mean, I'm not trying to. Fuck, I'm I'm getting on now. I don't, I'm not trying to like make some big music career. All I'm doing is just I love making music. I'm always gonna love making music. It, it's it's on it's on the level with with graph mm. for me. Like if not, probably more music means more to me than the graph does. Mm. And a lot of people don't even know that. Um, and like you say, I've got some new music coming this year. Vent 64. I sent you this Vent 64. It's just a pure, I mean, I've, got, oh, yeah. I've been working, I've got some beats of some heavy um, producer from, from Germany called Dexter. Nice. And I've got three fucking naughty underground boom bat proper nasty beats, man. And I thought, and that, that one I sent you, the Vent 64, I, heavy. Like, I wrote it off over a space of a few months. It was going to be a song and it just ended up going into a pure 64 fucking... Yeah, it's hard. Like, it's like, hard. Do you know what I mean? And I yeah. think this is. I've, I think this one, this one's gonna be light. I think this one's gonna be like lights more than the rest because mm. I think it's just it's touching on everything. It's not it's not graph, but it's sort of pure lyrics, different patterns, just wordplay. And I just, I mean, look, if you guys get a chance to listen to it, give it a stream. It's gonna be on all the platforms. Yeah, and and just for reference, for those that uh, aren't aware, and for the listening crew, A C R O S, just that, not across lights, but with the two S's, just across. Yeah, um, and it's all there. So that's the that's the future, my brother. And that's a good thing as well, just to touch on the, on the music, yeah. and the graph. Um, see, down like 
another thing with the CD boys as well. That I'm down with them. They're they're all they're not just a graph career, yeah, but they're true. musical crew as well. Yeah. Love them, all, man. That, that was yeah. one of the reasons why. I mean, I think I think Desire put me down as well, and it weren't just that. It was the music, it was the friendship, it was the graph, and the, the and mm. that sort of thing as well. So I think a lot of them. Um, it's almost like it's a spawns uh, extra uh, octopus arms into different. Uh, media and creative outlets. Graph is like an entry hole for that, isn't it? Definitely. In many yeah, respects, yeah. you know. Oh, I mean, there's some hardcore and there always will be, but there's there's also this opportunity to flex kind of a creative mind and yeah, you, know, you never know where that can go. That no, it is. It's definitely that, mate. It's just um, it's just fair play to everyone who's out there still doing all this shit, you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, don't, ever, don't listen to anyone else. If you want to fucking start getting into it now, yeah, it's never too late. All I say is just like study your fucking study it before you go out and do it. I mean, I said put something on my story the other day about oh, fucking was do you know how it is you sometimes you have fucking venting and putting shit mm. out. So like, a rather of drinks than, as well, you know. A lot tough. of people yeah. yeah, I mean there's a lot of people that just go straight into piecing and then they it starts from mm. the tag, man. Mm. People need to realise it starts from tagging. It took years of getting a tan style together and then mm. the, the hand style turning into a fucking piece. Block and a block of pieces. Yeah, and, you can't yeah. just skip. You can't skip this shit. There's mm. no fucking, there's no shortcut to this shit. I mean, if you go out and write with decent writers that you will definitely fast track up the ladder because they show you the techers and that. But yeah, when it comes to the painting itself, yeah, you, mm. you could probably, there's people out there probably never painted and they're going to be naturally good at that sort of thing. But when mm. it comes to the letter formation mm. and stuff, there's no fucking skipping that shit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You mm. can't you can't skip that. You got to do. You got to start from the fucking ground up, and that involves the t- getting a fucking decent tag. Because there's a lot of writers out there that can putting up these half pe- half decent pieces, and then they've got a tag next to it. It just looks like a kid's done it. Mm. You know, you got mm. you got to start. You should be should be working on your tags first, man. And once you got a tag hand style, everything else will start falling into place. Letter wise, sage of fucking truth. vice, man. That That's is, the truth, man. And it's great for me to hear as well. It's great. I think for anybody that is taking this shit seriously, it's like. Remind you've got to remind yourself that the 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 effort isn't to do a paint job. No. You've got to, you've got to actually have your skills. You need and to let bring some form. style, man. You got yeah. make you got to try your best to be original. Mm. It's not always the easiest because there's only so many A's out there. There's only so many C's you can do. But like that, the big the goal is getting your own letters up there with some most being as original as possible and having fun while you're doing it. But like you said, there's no skipping this shit. You can't just. You, there's no one. It's nine times out of ten, you're not going to get someone who who can't who can. You're not going to get hit, hit a level of piecing without getting your tag downs mm. and stuff first. You know. Yes, because that's where the flow, the control, that's where the that, flow is. Everything. I mean, all it is is a larger tag, really. If you're looking about it, mm. like you just. That's from my advice. If like if you are piecing out there and you're not getting any better, just revert back, man. Get yeah. revert back to the get the pen, pen and paper out. Stuff fucking bombing it up. Maybe even draw around your fucking tag, man. Some more style. There's a lot more style mm. going around the fucking tag letters. That's how I started. It was it was the tag, and then going block round in round in the tag. Oh, I've not heard that been done before. That's I don't know if that's a thing. Oh, that's what I used. To, I mean, that's what me and my few of my mates used to do. It used to be bumpy, big decent hands reach, and then going around the fucking tag with a in bubbled three D, no, and then sorry. adding shit on, and then it evolved from that. Now I don't do that now, obviously, because I've evolved them to. Doing more complex letters and stuff, mm. and sort of your letters are complex. Like, de- let's not. You know, I mean, I know you're very self-critical. I've been in. I've been with you when you've painted on more than one occasion, and you'll be like, "No, I don't like it." And I'm, you know what I mean? I'm spitting tea out. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, but yeah. you are a, you you <laughs> you're techers. You are techers. I can see you in PA. It makes sense, and I can see the influence of CD. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it it blows my mind that you're you, that you still, in the words of. Uh, the Rolling Stones, you can't get no satisfaction. No, no. I mean, there, there's a few walls. I'm not saying them all, but there is a few walls I've done and I've walked away from and I'm like, I'm fucking really happy with and I'm still looking back on now and I'm really happy, but there's there's stuff that I do that people are, ah, it's, it's, it's frustrating because some of the shit I hate and I post up, people everyone rate, loves, and yeah. then the stuff I've spent everything on I really like don't seem to get much love. Not that I'm bothered mm. about any of that shit, but I'm just saying it's just, it's a fucking weird love-hate relationship. It's the only addiction I've ever had is graffiti, man. I'm telling you, it's the only addiction I've been... I've dabbled in fucking drugs or drink and everything and nothing's ever took hold of me mm. that way graph has. I can't fucking stop, whether it's me writing on the fucking... The, the grease on my fucking phone screen when I'm sitting in traffic, whether I'm scratching on a fucking chair in a restaurant with my missus, whether I'm... All, mate, it's fucking bad. Like, you can't leave a bit of paper, I mean... Even the other day, like I was back at Slob's fucking um, flat after the wake and out of Teasy's wake, and he—I don't remember because I can't fucking remember a thing of it. But he he said to me that 
I wrote, scribbled all over his fucking letters and that for a hospital or some shit. But they, it made me laugh because well, it's the same everywhere. Like everyone, I've got some fucking mad scribbling thing. But I think everyone has anyway, but mm. like, I don't, mine's pretty bad. Like I can't, I don't even know I'm doing it. So I could be sitting there like on, on the phone or I'll be sitting there watching telly and I could be subconsciously fucking vandalising sank like and it's got me in trouble even in my f- 30s like <laughs> scratching into fucking leather seats in a restaurant without me even knowing I'm doing it I'll get off and I'll fucking look back and I've tagged the whole well, thing I've not even known it's your fucking known. problem man yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, it's a bad it's, it's, a, it's a fucking it's an addiction it ain't an unhealthy one but it's like it's the only one I've ever it's had it's habitual and I don't think I'm gonna, it's gonna go no I can't imagine and God and I hope it doesn't no do you know what I mean because every year you're coming with new whether it's whether it's graph or music you're you're coming up with the goods and you're not satisfied. Yeah, like man. yeah, that habit is is tormenting. Yeah, it's yeah. torment. It, it torments is. you. It does, but it, I mean, like it, it, I I have fucking dreams, man. Some of my fucking outlines. I know it sounds fucking mad, but misses anyone I'll be able to vouch for it. But I'm fucking. I'm getting up in the morning. I'm just like, what are you doing? I said, I've just seen this fucking letter link thing in my head, in my dream, man. I need to sketch it down. That's so and I've come down. Cool. I, and I know it sounds fucking weird, yeah. My missus like, you're fucking up, you're if you're not. I'm like, no, you don't understand. I, I've, I've just, just seen this fucking connection or this, this fucking symmetry letter fucking thing with the A or the S. And I'm like, I need to get it down before it goes out of my head. And I've had it where I've woke up in the morning and I've, and I've, I've had to sketch this down what I've seen. And then I've gone out and painted it and it's turned into my new style. And it's, I'm telling you, that's, wow. what, that's what I mean. It's, it's, it's sent from it's, the fucking it's gods. It's fucking weird, man. I know it sounds weird. People will be like, shut up, you dickhead. But it's the fucking truth, man. And the only person I can vouch for I'm missing because it's happened in the last couple of years, maybe once or twice, where I've actually seen, I've woke up and had to go downstairs before I've even brushed my teeth just to quickly get this pen out and wow. just drop, drop down this letter, man. Like, you know, it's fucking, fucking weird. It's weird, it. isn't it? I love it. But it is. It's a, it's a fucking weird, weird old. It's a weird old um, culture on like that we're all in, man. Like, and no one gets it. Like, I'm people look like people I hang around with outside of this shit because I, sp- I spend more time people out of graph than I do yeah. graph. I mean, I, I t- kind of keep my circle quite tight with a graph sort of thing, um, and I only write with certain people. Not not because I'm being uh, fucking rude or something. It's just a. Uh, I've had bad things happen mm. to me in the past mm. and it's just like I don't really need to be making new fucking friends at mm-hmm. 30, 34, 35. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I've got my boys. We're all in different crews as well. It's weird. Like, I'm, I'm, we're right with a group of people and we're, none of us are even in the same fucking crew. Like, yeah, we should yeah. have had our own thing going. But like you say, it's... Um, it's it's a weird old fucking weird old culture, weird old hobby and and no one gets it and, and no one ever fucking will... And it's better like that, and isn't it? and and it's our little club, yeah. And whether you're fucking piecing or whether you're painting trains or whether you're doing anything, like we all add into it. As long as you ain't biting it, as long as you ain't bringing some negative shit, mm. um, you know what I mean. It's my my eyes. I feel like everyone's fucking welcome to add their bit, you yeah. know. Like you say, and and rightly so, you're a guest in the the scene, and you add a contribution, and uh, yeah, hundred percent, beautiful man. thing, man. Hundred percent, yeah. That's what I'd say if if, if anyone wants to say, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a guest in this, mm-hmm. a guest in the scene, and I, and um, I'm, I don't claim to be anything special, don't claim to be fucking done anything f- massively to fucking add to it. But like I say, I've had my bit to the scene, and I, and I appreciate everyone what everyone's done. That's all I wanted to say, really. Do you know what I mean? And it's big up, big up. Thank you for being a guest on here. No, it's any time. And no. may it rain, may it continue. You know, Vent sixty four out very soon. If you ain't listening and you're a little bit late to the party on the date that we dropped this, it'll probably be out now. So go and check it out. Um, across, man. Rain on, my brother. Nah, cheers, man. Yeah, nice pleasure one. having you on. We out like it was out of fashion. Across to the building, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. All right, we don't do it for our health. We do it for the culture. You understand? Um, don't speak to anyone. I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Easy. <laughs>